What's going on guys? Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Anderson Composites Type GR GT350 Carbon Fiber Fender Replacements available for the 2015 to 2017 GT EcoBoost or V6 Mustang. You should be taking a look at the Anderson Composite Carbon Fiber GT350 style fender if you're in the market for some serious aggression to your front end, something that gives you a more functional fender than your factory option here with your cooling vent and fender inserts, while also giving you a huge step up appearance-wise. The big two factors here are styling and functionality. Again, like I said, it's got those cooling vents here that streamline the airflow from the front grille and the front bumper through the braking system and out your fender there, which again is not an option from the factory. This is a replica GT350 style fender here, so you are getting that wide body look with the addition of that vent there. Now the carbon fiber here is high temp, hand laid, true carbon fiber finish with an extremely high gloss weave on top. This is definitely something that's gonna stand out, which is why it might appeal to some of the guys out there hitting a lot of car shows. If you're going for the trophy, you might wanna look into something like this that can make your S550 stand out from the other ones at the show. Another factor to take into consideration here, while it might not be a ton of weight, this is definitely a little bit lighter than your factory bumper. We weighed this one in at about four pounds. Now, if you're looking to shed some weight, again, this might not be the most drastic of changes, but every single ounce can make a difference, right? Some guys might argue that, so if you are on the drag strip, again, that cooling is gonna come into play, but of course, the lightweight material is also a factor as well. Now, if you wanna pick up the pair, you can do so for just about 800 bucks. A lot of you guys at home might be thinking that is a ton of money for a couple of fenders, but that is a very common price tag for a lot of these aftermarket body panel carbon fiber pieces. If you're going for that 350 look, this is a very unique styling, so in my opinion, 800 bucks is something you should be expecting. The installation here, I'm giving two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. Anytime you're doing a body part like a fender, there's a lot of intricate bolts to take care of. You wanna make sure you're not breaking any plastic clips that can be more on the fragile side. Now also, another thing to point out here is any aftermarket body panels might not have the most perfect fitment right out of the box. You might have to make some modifications to bolt holes. In this case, we had to make modifications to a couple of those plastic clips that went down by the side skirt. Now, once that was taken care of, it was a pretty decent fitment. And as you can see, it looks really good on our Competition Orange 2015 GT. A lot of tools are gonna to be needed for this one. Now, in order to make our modifications, I used a filer. We also have a ratchet on deck with a ton of different sockets. A swivel joint also makes life a little easier for those hard to reach corners. And you also might wanna have a cordless impact gun for some of those easier to reach ones to make life a little bit easier. We did end up popping off our wheel here to get this installed, which does make life easier as well, pulling out that fender liner. And once that's all taken care of, you're looking at spending about two hours in the garage at home. Now, if you're handling it on the floor, make sure you have a jack and jack stands on deck. Having a helping hand goes a long way as well, but it is something you can tackle by yourself. I wanna show you every single step of getting this installed, so let's just get to it. Tools used for this install were a cordless impact, ratchet, extension, a filer, panel removal tool, needle nose pliers, 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, 7 millimeter socket, 5 16 socket, universal swivel, 10 millimeter wrench, 7 millimeter wrench, and a flathead screwdriver. First step here before we can get to installing our new Anderson Composites GT350R fender, we're gonna have to work on uninstalling the factory one. We're gonna start by popping the hood and removing the weather strip liner between the hood line and the fender itself to expose some of those bolts. So under the hood, we're gonna remove this weather stripping here, which is held on by a couple of push pin clips. Now these clips are pretty tiny, so if you don't have a small enough panel removal tool, you're going to have to remove the weather stripping first, then go back with a needle nose plier and pop these out, sticking them back in the underside of the weather stripping. That makes it easier to put the weather stripping back on once you have your Anderson Composites fender in place. So what we're gonna do is peel back on the weather stripping to pop that off. Set that aside, go back with our needle nose pliers and pop off your clips. Now if you have a small enough panel removal tool, the whole weather stripping will come off all in one piece just like this with the clips underneath them. You'll pry up underneath 
pop them all off individually without removing them from the weather stripping altogether. So we'll set this whole thing aside. Now, as you can see, there are three fender bolts holding them together. So we're gonna start by removing all three of these. So we got our 10 millimeter socket, we'll get these off. So the next bolt we're gonna remove here is up by our cowl at our windshield where your hood meets your fender and your door. So you're gonna peel back this little corner of the weather stripping to expose one of the bolts holding on that fender there. Now there's one 5 16 bolt. So it is tight, it is a really tight space, so you're gonna need a universal swivel socket or you're gonna need a regular 5 16 wrench. I'm gonna to try to make life a little easier here with the swivel and pop this thing off. You wanna make sure you're holding on to all of your factory hardware to reinstall with the Anderson Composite Fender. All right, the next bolt here, you're gonna open up your door and expose the one holding your fender to your door frame. So you're gonna use your 10 millimeter wrench if you have a tight space like I do, or a socket will do the trick. All right, so the next step we're gonna do here is not mandatory, but it is gonna make your life a little bit easier. So to get the bottom bolts for the fender here underneath of the skirt, we're gonna to have to pop off our fender liner, and then to access the bolt holding the fender to the front bumper, we're also gonna to have to do the same thing. It does make life a little easier if you pop off the wheel for the side that you're working on, just to access that fender a little bit easier, get some tools in there. So I got my air gun out here, I'm gonna pop off all these lug nuts and get the tire out of the way. All right, so we got our panel removal tool here. I'm gonna pop off these three push pin clips holding our fender liner to the fender itself. All right, now that those three push pin clips are removed, this fender liner pops out of place pretty nicely. Now, as you can see, we have a side skirt on, but for the guys that don't have a side skirt on, you're just gonna have to pop off this plastic trim. Now, as you saw with those three push pin clips removed, it comes off pretty easily. Now, for the guys with the side skirt like we do, it might be in your best interest to pop the side skirt off first just so you don't damage it, but if you wanna pop them off all in one piece, it's just pulling apart past this fender. You don't have to take the whole thing off, just enough to access the three bolts holding on the next layer of plastic trim here, which is gonna cover up the three bolts holding on your fender liner. So first things first, we got this peeled back here. We're gonna grab our socket and extension and pop off the three bolts holding on this black trim. So we got those three 10 millimeter bolts removed, set those aside and pop off that plastic trim panel to expose the two 10 millimeter bolts you have to remove for the fender. All right, now we're back in the fender using our panel removal tool to remove all the push pins holding on that fender liner. We're gonna get that whole thing removed. All right, now we're on the bumper side of the fender liner, popping off those push pin clips to disconnect that from the bumper. All right, now you can remove the 10 millimeter bolts holding this on. We've already got one off here. There's another one directly next to that. Now we can drop down a couple socket sizes and remove the two inside of the plastic trim. The last two bolts here are actually inside the fender behind your 5.0 emblem or your pony emblem, depending on your trim. Now, if you get an extension with your impact gun or your ratchet, you'll be able to pop these off with your 10 millimeter socket. So we finally got our factory fender off of our 2015 GT sitting on the rack next to our Anderson Composites Type R GT 350R fender. Now, as you can see, there are night and day differences between the two as far as finish goes, the style, and of course the functionality. The factory fender here doesn't really have any other function than just being a fender. The GT 350 is a direct replica of the Shelby GT 350, which had fully functional fenders with the vents here for cooling capabilities. That is also replicated here and it has those inserts as well as additional carbon fiber finished inserts to cap that off if you don't like the bare finish of it like this. 
Now, speaking of carbon fiber, this is a true 100% hand laid carbon fiber material, has a very impressive weave here and an extremely glossy finish on top. Now, the carbon fiber finish is more of a luxury look on the exterior appearance of your S550. This also does have a slightly wider finish than the factory fender. You get the bulge going over the wheel well, but instead of flattening out like your factory one would, it bulges back over top for that ventilation piece. That is gonna simulate somewhat of a wide body look on your front end, something that the factory option does not offer, as well as some of the other aftermarket fenders on the market. The 350R is a very unique look, which S550 owners can now pick up for themselves without having to spend buku bucks on a Shelby. Now, I wanna show you guys how this gets installed. We do have to transfer over three clips from the bottom of our factory fender over to the bottom of the Anderson composite option, but then we'll be able to get this installed, so let's get to it. Time to put our GT350 and GT350R fender on. What we're gonna do is slide it into place, and then we're gonna put our nut on the top of the stud here, and then a 10 millimeter bolt on the inside of the fender. Now you wanna make sure you're getting this as nice as possible with your body lines, how you're gonna want this set up. All right, next up we have the two bolts that we removed down here. We're gonna pull back our trim, get that lined up, and bolt it down. The other one is just to the right. Next up, we're gonna put our plastic trim back in there. Now, as you remember, pull this back. This will be lined up and we'll snap that into place. Now, what I should mention here is you may have to you know, drill out some of these holes. You can use a filer just to file that open a little bit. Those plastic clips that have the threading in it will get transferred over from your factory fender to this one. Again, you might have to file some of these out. In some cases, modification may be necessary. Get that lined up, snapped into place, and we'll be able to bolt them down. Now moving over to where the bumper attaches to the new fender here, you're gonna have to transfer over those threaded clips from the factory fender over to your new one. Now that you can see those two square holes, there's two of these clips here, we're gonna pop those into place. Now you might have to use a pair of needle nose pliers just to squeeze them in. Same thing for the other one. All right, now your black plastic trim is gonna go over. You can see these two prongs are gonna sit in two open holes on your new fender. And then you're gonna bolt it down using the eight millimeter hardware that, we came, that it came off with originally. You're going to lift your factory bumper into place, snap that in, and grab your seven millimeter screw that we took off originally and put it back on the inside. All right, now we got that seven millimeter screw, pop that right back into place. Grab your socket, tighten that down. All right, now we can throw our fender back in and put back all of those pushpin clips. All right, now we can throw our wheel back on and drop it back down to the ground. All right, so we got our car back on the ground here, opened up the door. You wanna make sure you're using caution when opening up that door. If your fender is out of alignment, the door opening might crunch down on the side of the fender. You do not want that to happen. Carbon fiber can shred. You don't want that to happen. So be cautious. If it does crunch, you wanna make sure you're closing the door properly and then going back and making sure everything is up to alignment. Now that we have that taken care of, back to our 10 millimeter bolt. We're gonna put this inside of our door frame. Next up is our seven millimeter bolt here going back up where our cowl is. It's got that cut out for you. And again, you might need to make modifications to where the bolt holes are, but if you do not here, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten it down by hand and then grab a seven millimeter socket and get to work. All right, once you have that tightened down, 
pop your weather stripping back in and snap it onto the tab on your new fender. All right, now we got our hood popped and we're gonna finish it off with the final three bolts. All right, last step here, throw on our weather stripping that we originally took off at the beginning of the video. You wanna make sure that that open portion is facing the inside of your engine bay and that flat portion is against the side of your fender. Now that we have our fender installed, I want to show you guys this optional carbon fiber fender insert. Now this insert here is gonna go around this functional fender vent here and sit exactly like this. Now again, guys, this is an option. You don't have to install this once your fender's installed. Some guys might think it looks better without it. Some guys might think it looks better with it. Now, as you can see, this honeycomb insert is also removable. We keep these in. Now, as you can see, it is not a carbon fiber insert here. It actually doesn't really have a finished paint job on it. You can see some of it's black, some of it's that unfinished color. So if you don't like the look of that, it might be a really good idea to throw this on top over it. Or if you don't want to use this, you can paint that as well. Pop it off, send it to your paint guy, spray it at home, whatever you see fit. It's your personal preference. If you did want to install this and you do not want it to be 100% permanent, you can do what we're doing, throwing a couple of strips of automotive bonding 3M tape on the back of that. That red tape, we're going to peel off and stick it into place here on the side. If you did want it to be 100% permanent, or at least closer to 100% permanent, you could always use epoxy and fill in the middle section here, throw epoxy over the edges, 3M tape it as well. That will really make sure it gets that good bonding. We are going to end up removing these since we aren't keeping this fender permanent on our 2015 GT here. So what I did was I cut small strips of 3M tape and lined this one side. I'm gonna peel off our red backing here. We've already made sure that this is completely clean. Now, as you're doing this, you wanna use alcohol wipes to free it of any dirt or dust, fingerprints and whatnot that would prevent this from getting a good bond. We've already done the cleaning, so I just wanna stick it into place. Now you can repeat this for the opposite side. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up my review and install of the Anderson Composites Type GR GT350 style carbon fiber fenders, which are a great choice for the S550 owner looking for that true carbon fiber exterior appearance, a functional cooling vent for your braking system while replicating that Shelby GT350 we've all come to know and love. You can pick up the pair for yourself right here at AmericanMuscle.com.